What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an outstanding day. Today we're going to continue along with our warm season planting. On that last video we got pumpkins planted. Today we're going to get some cucumbers and some summer squash planted in this little plot behind me here. And at the end of the video we're going to check on our girls, see how they're doing, see if they're done cleaning up this plot where we need to plant our sweet corn. So just like I've been doing with quite a few of our plots that we've been planting warm season stuff in where the plots were ready but then we got some pretty hard rains I've just came in here and kind of strip tilled where we're going to be planting no need to cultivate the whole thing so we're going to be planting a row of cucumbers on this side of this arch panel trellis planting another row on this side of this arch panel trellis and then our summer squash is going to go over here so just one row of summer squash two row of cucumbers in this small plot here that's about I don't know 15 20 foot wide probably about 30 foot long so this is our second full year using this arch panel trellis here last spring we planted some Christmas lima beans on it they did really well we got a lot of those put up in the freezer and in the fall we planted some English peas on this of course they didn't get that tall they didn't climb all over it like those lima beans did but we had a good harvest of English peas and now we'll be planting cucumbers on it. So I really liked this arch panel trellis so far. It took a little time, a little effort to get it installed the way I wanted, but I really liked having it here. This is a permanent structure so it doesn't move. The only disadvantage to it that I've found is that I can't rotate things as much as I do in the other plots, just because there's not that many families of vegetables that have members that climb. So we can plant, you know, climbing beans, English peas, cucumbers. We can plant gourds on there, but there's not a lot of stuff that we can rotate on this arch panel trellis. So we have to be a little more careful with our rotation because like I said, this thing's not moving. It's a pain to move or would be a pain to move. So we just have to kind of make sure, okay, beans this time, maybe cucumbers this time, maybe beans this next time. We don't get to spread things out as far as a three year rotation. It's more of a maybe of a two season rotation that we're able to do with this thing. And just like I told you on that last video when we were talking about watering pumpkins with squash and cucumbers, drip irrigation is gonna be very, very important. Squash and cucumbers are prone to getting mildews. Those mildews tend to accelerate the more leaf moisture you have. So if we can keep moisture off the leaves, we can have plants that last longer and produce longer. So we had a drip set up on this plot this past fall where we had some flowers, greens, those English peas planted in here. And I pulled that up recently so I could cultivate it, but I saved all the components here. I have our main line still. I have the drip lines still. So we shouldn't have to install any new pieces we just need to put these pieces back down, maybe change our row spacing a little bit. So let me get those pieces, lay them out here, make some furrows. I can use the wheel hoe on that summer squash row over there because it's kind of out in the open, but I have to use a manual triangle hoe or something to make a furrow alongside this panel trellis because the wheel hoe can't get in there that tight. And just in time, my helper has awoken from his slumber it looks like he's ready to plant as well. Ty Ty, you ready to plant some cucumbers? Yeah. Yes? What about squash? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I like squash. You like squash? You like cucumbers? Yeah. I, I like them turning into pickles. I love pickles. You love pickles? <laughs> what if I told you you took my breath away? What if I told you I wish that I could stay? Is it a mistake? Will my heart break? Or will you love when I say? What if I told you you took my breath away? All right, so a little teamwork makes a dream work. We got our drip system installed here. So for our two rows of cucumbers, we're going to be putting in transplants, which I'll show you in a minute. So I left those furrows open. We'll close them as we put those transplants in the ground there. For our row of summer squash here, we're going to be direct seeding those. So I went ahead and closed that furrow 
because we don't want to plant the seeds as deep as that drip tape furrow is there. We also put some 10 to 8 in those furrows because this plot here was good on phosphorus but a little low on potassium. So we use that Nature Safe 10 to 8 fertilizer and now we're ready to plant. So we got some pretty good looking cucumber transplants here. Mm. This is the first time we've ever transplanted cucumbers. Oh. We've always direct seeded them, but all the commercial farmers around here transplant them. Okay. Um, so we figured we'd give it a try and maybe this gives us a little head start yeah. as opposed to direct seeding. Also probably helps us save a little bit of seed because we can get all our seed to germinate better in a controlled environment. Okay. In the past when I direct seed them, I plant them pretty thick along yeah, the road do. and then I kind of thin mm -hmm. them out. Here we don't waste as many seeds so there's an advantage to that. Got a nice little root ball here so these, sh these things should take off growing pretty quick looks good to me we're growing a slicer on one side and a pickling variety oh, pickling are my favorite i slice the, the pickling side. i slice the pickling you like the pickling better than I the like slicers the mm -hmm. i like a tiny cucumber okay. that big cucumber i don't know what it is too big i got you i like a little tiny why because it's easier on the mandolin yeah it's easier on the mandolin and titus eats it it seems like it's not as intimidating Oh, okay. The kids okay. like it because they're small. Yeah, he just grabs it and eats the whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. So we're doing the Supremo, which we really, really liked last year. Yeah. We're going to do that on this first side, the side closest to us. On the other side, we're going to do our Slicer, which is Corinto. Never tried that one before, but it has oh. rave reviews. And once we get these planted, I'll talk to you a little bit more about some issues we may have planting those two varieties side by side. Uh -oh. I don't know if we will or not, but we'll talk about that a little bit later um we really like the supremo max pack is another good pickler yep. that we've grown yep. i you was doing some research online the other day and i found that it was like this blog talking about the best 15 cucumber varieties out there okay. and there was another one a look like a newer one bred by the same company that does supremo and i can't pronounce the name some over, uh -uh. overseas company but i think it was called max supreme or something like that hmm. and it was supposed to be better than this one i haven't found any Dang. people online that carry it but that's one i may try to chase down and try in future years what better how i mean how much better can it's I, a cucumber yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know okay. that's just what this blog said and so okay. it kind of intrigued me to want to try it but Got it. we're sticking with the supremo this year all right so here's our tray with our cucumber transplants we didn't do a lot we just did about i don't know a third of that 162 tray there so we got our two varieties there still probably got a few more transplants that we're actually going to need all the rest of this is herbs that are not quite ready yet but they're growing pretty good so this is what we're going to be using for today and then we'll put this tray back in the greenhouse once we're done with the cucumbers so we're going to start right here because this is where the trellis starts for the drip tape starts back there so we don't really have anything planted right along here on this tape now in the past when we would direct seed these this furrow would be covered up and i would just put them in here two to three inches apart the seeds along there and i would plant them pretty thick and i maybe thin them out to six inches or so but with these transplants and since we don't need that near that many cucumbers i'm going to put these a foot apart so we can see our little water spots here developing so we're just going to put one plug at each water spot plant it a little deep but not super deep and then as we go along there we'll cover up that tape so there's another water spot right there darling that doesn't seem quite 12 inches apart it is it is okay wait am i doing it right on top yeah yeah put it in there and then cover it up there you okay. go and then just kind of cover that tape up as you go i'll bring you more transplants and we'll get it knocked out i'm thinking maybe i'll take you out so we can get a little closer now Let's hear what's on your mind So Brooklyn's finishing up on the Supremos here. That still looks close, even at a foot apart. But that's further apart than I normally plan. But that's going to be a ton of cucumbers on that. That's about, I don't know, 20, 25 like plants there. Yeah, it looks closer than a foot, but it is a foot apart. I almost wonder if I should... Let them grow a little bit and pick the best one and thin them out to two feet apart just because I don't know that we're going to need that many cucumbers. Put some more dirt around it, buddy. Good job. So here we're going to do the exact same thing with this Corinto. We won't plant anything at the beginning here where there's no 
trail of support will start right here what, in this T post. Yeah, there's water coming out there. We're not gonna plant anything right there. We're gonna start right here where this water's coming out. You see this up, Tata? Yeah. So we're gonna put one right there. We'll skip over to the next one and do them a foot apart. Cover them up. Cover them up. Mm -hmm. Cause all this time I've been wondering, are you feeling what? Well, it wasn't intentional, but I planned that just right. I planted just the right amount of seeds there because we used every single transplant and we got to the end of each row. There was one short on the Supremo. We had just the right amount on the Corinto here. And like I said, I may let these things grow up, see which plants look the best, see if any die, and actually thin these out to two feet apart just because I don't know that I want to pick that many cucumbers every day. That's going to be buckets and buckets of cucumbers every two or three days. What did you say about giving away cucumbers, honey? I said it is hard to get rid of those cucumbers sometimes. <laughs> You'll tell people, I got some cucumbers, and they're like, just give me one or two. Yeah, I'm like, now I got 400. <laughs> yeah, I want you to take this whole big old sack here. <laughs> we need to find somebody who likes to make pickles. Yeah. What you got? Summer squash. Let me hold up. Okay. All right, cukes are in the ground. Now it's time for summer squash. We're going to direct seed these. That's the way we always do it. The commercial guys around here, just like cucumbers, they transplant them. Seems to work good for them. I've seen other people transplant summer squash, but we're going to direct seed them. Yeah. And around here, we'll plant several rounds of summer squash. So we'll plant some now. We'll plant some more in a month and a half. Uh oh. Oh, you found you, Chloe's Charlie. daddy? Okay, thank you. <laughs> we keep having random cats show up and um, Titus just swears Titus up is, and down. He's, he's putting together yeah. the family tree. <laughs> just, just, just. Anyway, so. We succession plant. We succession plant. We usually plant different varieties with the succession planting. Mm -hmm. So this first planting, these squash won't have near the insect and disease pressure as the second planting will right. because the heat will be a lot more for the second planting. Right. So if there are varieties that are less disease tolerant that we want to grow, now's the time for us to grow them. In that second succession, that's when we want to plant those varieties that are resistant to everything. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as yellow traditional summer squash go, I the like this. I like the straight neck better oh, than the crook neck. Yeah, I do too. It's easier to cut. They're easier to slice. They're also easier to harvest. If you're just mm -hmm. throwing squash in a bucket, or even when you're picking them, that crook on the crook neck will break off. That's why we like straight necks better. Yeah. So we're going with Enterprise. Got these from seeds and such. Now for our succession planting, I have a similar variety called Grand Prize, I believe something else prize okay. and it's a lot more disease resistant than this one right uh, but this one should be okay in this first planting slot yeah. so we're doing uh we're not doing any patty pans oh we're not not this first go around oh. we may do some the okay. second go around so oh, we're doing this yellow squash okay. and then here we have a costata romanesca zucchini oh yeah those are good do you remember those they yeah. have the ridges on yeah them? they're beautiful and they are delicious so last year in our second succession planting we tested um just a standard kind of heirloom costata romanesca from mm -hmm. i think it was high mowing seeds yep. and then we compared that one to this hybrid costata romanesca called pantheon and this pantheon blew the doors off yeah the op or heirloom variety so this <laughs> is the one we're going and uh i got more seeds here we may plant this one a second time because it did pretty good did so good. um we're not growing any regular standard zucchini uh the flavor on these okay. was a lot better to me uh um, you think last they had kind of a nuttier flavor a little oh, better texture they, did. they so, did you're right about that we're gonna go with the costata romanesca and then the yellow straight neck now how how long do we normally have squash i feel like we have it until july like you were constantly planning yeah if i if i plan ahead and keep it planted yeah yeah i mean ideally down here these things will start producing in about 40 days from planting them 40 50 days and we'll have probably maybe three good weeks of production right. there and then the plants start looking like poo and then he snatches them they're so out he is not he's not gonna let them it doesn't matter for that one or two last squash mm -mm. we're pulling them out and throwing them in the woods I don't, i'm not here to provide breeding habitat for <laughs> pests and diseases so uh, i will just plant some more somewhere else so. and you always move your squash around 
Always, right? always. Always. You never plant your squash in the uh, same place yeah. year after year. And when we pull them up, as we'll show you whenever that time comes, we get them far away from the garden. Far away. We don't compost them. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. No, no, no. There's too many uh, fungal spores going on there. So squash and what else do we always do that with? I can't remember. There's another plant that I feel Tomatoes like we Tomatoes. always get out. Potatoes too. There's several. The ones that are prone to diseases, we get them far, far okay. away. All right, sounds good. So we're going to direct seed these um, right beside that drip tape. I'll show you how we do it. All right, so when we're direct seeding squash on top of this drip tape here, there's a little bit of technique to it, and I've learned this over the years. Way back in the day, I would just put, you can see the wet spots here where the emitters are. So there's one there. There's a water spot there. Way back in the day, I would just drop the seeds right on top of that water spot put a little soil on top of it but it's almost too wet right there for the seeds mm, bless you and i wouldn't get very good germination so what i started doing was actually putting the seeds kind of right beside that emitter there and since we got plenty of seeds we, we'll make sure we get a good stand here i'll put two seeds right there like that and then we'll just lightly cover them up and kind of pack them in so if we plant right on top of that, it doesn't always work really well, so we plant right to the side of it. Still gets plenty of water for good germination. Okay, so we got room here for these things to kind of spread them. out both ways. So I'm going to plant them kind of close along the row. We're going to plant them two feet apart. So Brooklyn, skip over. Oh, I didn't skip. Sorry. It's all right. Just, just leave them. We got uh, plenty of seeds. Oops, just leave sorry. them. Sorry. Oh, that's the bad guy. Go give that to the chickens, Tata. Go give it to the chickens quick. They'll love it. Go give it to the chickens. Hurry. <laughs> right here, Tata. Okay, here, Tata. Cover it up. Well, what? That's good. Thank you. And that'll work out good because we're about halfway down the row anyway. So okay. we'll do uh, Pantheon on the rest of the row. Remember one, not together. We got to separate them. Okay. Now cover them up. No. Not with that side. Cover them up with this side. He wants to get in that mud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ah! All right, so some more warm season planting checked off the list. We still got watermelons to do. That'll probably be next. And then we still got some stuff. We got to plant in the greenhouse. I'm kind of behind on my greenhouse seed starting. Yeah. Got to get my okra going and my flowers going. Oh, yes. Um, so still got some more stuff to start in the greenhouse. The watermelons will probably be next on the list. Well, corn, too. We got mm -hmm. our corn plots that are getting ready. So got zipper peas to go in the ground, peanuts. So I'd say we're probably about halfway You're through. You're gonna try peanuts again? We're gonna try peanuts again. Oh, we'll heavens. see if we get them germinated or not. I got a rascal right here. <laughs> 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 All right, they gotta head out. But now we're gonna talk about that maybe some issues we have planting these two cucumber varieties side by side. So as far as cucumbers go, besides just the pickling and slicing variants, we have several different types. So you've got your open pollinated or more heirloom cucumber varieties, things like national pickling, where if they are isolated and not planted with any other varieties, so that there's no cross pollination happening, you can save the seeds and replant those. Then you've got your hybrids, like the Supremo we planted here, which have more disease resistance built in, and that really benefits us down here. I've never had that much success growing open pollinated or heirloom cucumber varieties. They'll produce a few, but nothing like these hybrids with the disease resistance will. And then you have the gynoecious types. Gyno meaning female, so gynoecious cucumbers mean that they produce predominantly female flowers and as a result are more productive. Now we've grown several gynoecious varieties in the past. We like Diomede, which is a gynoecious slicer. Stonewall is another gynoecious slicer. And then as far as the pickling varieties go, Calypso is a really good gynoecious pickling variety. Now the Supremo we planted here is not gynoecious, but I've found that it's just as productive, if not more productive than Calypso, even though Calypso produces mostly female flowers. And I think that has to do with the disease package. We just get more longevity out of these Supremo plants than we would those Calypso plants. So all of those, the open pollinated, the hybrid, the gynoecious, and even the gynoecious hybrids require pollinators. You gotta have some type of insect that's gonna transfer that pollen from the male flower to the female flower to get your fruit. But the fourth type doesn't require a pollinator and that is the Parthenocarpic 
cucumbers. Now these parthenocarpic types are usually grown inside greenhouses because they need isolation and they're pretty desirable on the market because they don't really have any seeds in them and a lot of people don't like cucumber seeds from what I understand sometimes cucumber seeds make people burp. I've never had that happen but I understand it can be a problem for some people. So this Corinto slicing variety we planted is parthenocarpic and gynoecious, which means it's supposed to be super, super productive. However, I have read that you gotta be really careful planting parthenocarpic cucumbers next to another kind of cucumber. They're really supposed to be isolated from any other variety. So we might have some problems here. I don't know, we shall see. The few articles I read said that planting parthenocarpic cucumbers with other varieties nearby can cause the parthenic cucumbers to have seeds whereas they normally wouldn't have seeds that's not a big deal for me i'm not you know against cucumber seeds by any means but i also read that it can cause the fruit to be you know misshapen which might be a little bit of an issue so we'll see what happens here we're going to have plenty of cucumbers to eat either way i'm not worried about that but we'll see if the corinto variety suffers as far as the appearance of them from being planted this close to the suprema and now as promised Let's check on the girls here. So the girls are way down there on the end of this plot and this is their last day on this cover crop here. They have done their job. They have mowed it down really nicely. So this is the first lane they were on. You can see that clover, that Belanza clover has grown back really well. This was the second lane they were on and the third lane right here. So hopefully we got some nice fertilizer addition here so we can plant our sweet corn now. So as I told you on that video, when we moved the chickens over here to this plot, this did push back my sweet corn planting a little bit, not by a whole lot. Ideally, I would plant sweet corn probably middle of March or so. Today, it's the 27th of March. By the time I get this cover crop incorporated, let it break down a little bit, it'll probably be the first week of April. So it pushed us back about two to three weeks, but not a big deal. We'll still get a nice sweet corn crop off this plot here. Now they like to talk to me this time in the afternoon because they know it's time to be moved, to be put on something else to eat. But I don't have any more delicious cover crops for them to eat because all our plots are being planted or have been planted currently. So we're just gonna have to bump them around in the yard for a little bit until we get some cover crops planted for them to eat again. And with them being just on grass that gets mowed every week, I'm probably gonna have to start back giving them some layer pellets the centipede grass and Bermuda grass in our yard is not near as nutritious as some of these clover and these other cover crops that we're planting here. So we'll start back giving them a little bit of layer of pellets just to supplement their nutrition. Now we're still only getting about one to two eggs per day and I don't know which chickens are laying those eggs. And I'm gonna be interested to see once we kind of start giving them some layer pellets again, if the egg production does increase or if it kind of stays the same. But for all the chicken experts out there that said that these cover crops weren't giving them enough calcium and the eggs were gonna be brittle, that has not been the case at all. The eggs we've been getting have nice strong shells on them. And that's because this clover has more calcium than the actual layer feed does. So having them on this cover crop is ideal. That's where we wanna have them. It just didn't work out quite as planned. We don't have any spot for them to go on right now. As soon as our onions are done, we're gonna plant a cover crop in that plot and then we'll start letting them graze some more of these nutritious cover crops again. So let's go ahead and move them off this plot here and onto the grass, cause probably when we're done with this video, I'm gonna go ahead and mow and till this up one time. That way we can get our corn planted as soon as possible. Is it a mistake when my heart breaks? Or will you love when I say all right so we got them parked down there in the grass now i wanted to get them off this plot a little bit so i have room to turn around the tiller and we'll still move them every single day because i don't want them tearing up any particular spot in the yard too much but we'll let them graze that grass and we'll move them every day just kind of bump them around probably be a month before i have any other plot ready for them to eat so we'll just kind of scoot them along here a little bit of time and eventually make our way way over there to where that onion plot is. And one more thing about the chickens. So I recently upgraded my chicken water 
Now I've had a lot of chickens in my life and I've always used these galvanized waters right here and I've always liked them for the most part. A lot of people claim they rust and that there's a lot of issues with them. I've never really had any issues with them and they always last a long, long time for me. However, I recently started noticing that this thing would get empty a lot quicker than it should be getting empty and on days where it was really hot it seemed like i had to replace the water or fill it back up with water every day and i think it's because this metal gets so hot that there was a lot of evaporation going on there so last time i was in tractor supply getting some dog food i bought this piece right here this plastic one which doesn't look near as well built as this one but this one actually works a lot better the plastic doesn't seem to cause the water in here to get as hot and evaporate as much. Also, this one has kind of a deeper well on it, and so the water stays in there good. You got to be real careful with this one. You got to lay it on a flat piece of ground. If you lay it on unlevel ground, it'll all drain out. Whereas I don't have to worry about that as much with this one. This one does have a bigger capacity. I think this one is three gallon. And I can go about a week and a half, two weeks without having to fill this one back up. I do pull it out and clean it out every day. Just kind of dump the water out the side there. But this one's working a lot better than this one. So I hope you enjoyed the chicken update. And as we do more of this chicken cover crop grazing in our garden plots, we'll get better at planting things so we don't have this period of time where we have to move them around the yard. Ideally, like I said, we'd like to have them in the garden plots, fertilizing the garden plots, eating these nutrient dense cover crops. Nothing wrong with them being in the yard. People have chickens in the yard all the time, but I'd like to have them in the garden plots. I just gotta get a little bit better at planting ahead of time. So I always have something for them to eat. Always have a plot designated for them. And it looks like we've got a nice break from the rain for at least the next four maybe five days so we should be able to knock out a good bit more of our warm season planting and we'll be sure to take you guys along as we get more of this stuff planted if you're watching on youtube make sure to check out our affiliate links below a lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at lazy dog farm even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where you'll find our garden blog recipes recommended products lazy dog farm merch all kind of good stuff if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life